Thank you. Thank you for joining me and like minds for the Zoomathon today. Uh, it's uh, for a good cause. Uh, well, at least I'd like to think so. It's for me, actually. I'm a old comedian who has fallen on hard times and have been fighting with the government. And in this fight, well, I fought the law and the law won. And they have... Uh, taking my home. I've lived here for 25 years or so and uh, raised my boys here. I taught them a lot of things, both good and bad here. But uh, it's uh, a long story. Uh, basically, um, I had to uh, move in here. We sold our house because grandma got really sick. So we sold my house I used to have and put everything we could into grandma's house and try to take care of her until she passed away. Control. Uh, I was her caregiver for many years and uh, I had to quit going over the road because of that. And um, it, it was, it, it was, I, I enjoyed doing it for the most part. And uh, but I missed my comedy, and uh, but grandma did pass away, and we miss her, and we pray that she's uh happy now every day. And in her will, she left this home to my two boys, so they would always have a home and a place to stay. And, uh, well, uh, anyway, for some reason, the probate, excuse me, uh, for some reason, the probate court said the will was invalid and there was nothing we could do. And they are taking the house because of back taxes. And they won't let me pay the taxes because I'm not on the deed. So the government is taking my house and the, there's nothing I can do about it. So I have to find a new place to live for me and my boy and my dog. We have a dog, fat boy, part boxer, uh, part uh, sharp pay. He's got the face of a sharp pay with that little, well, you can't see his eyes all the time, and but the body of a boxer, great dog, great dog. But I need money to help me find a new place to live because I thought we'd, I'd be here till I died. And uh, that's basically what I'm here for today, to help uh, raise money and uh, hopefully make you guys laugh here in a few minutes when I stop this shit. Uh, but well, we're uh, here to yeah, help you, Richard. Well, I appreciate, I appreciate everything you and like minds and 
Simone gonna, and James and it. everybody who's out there right now. I can't uh, see any names right now, but I appreciate everything you guys are doing for me. And I have a lot of love for all of you out there. Uh, uh, you will be very few people in your life that you consider great friends. And I consider you guys my great friends. I really do. Like mine, you guys have... Yeah, you guys have helped me a lot. And I <laughs> you stuck it. with us as well. And that's what Like Minds is about. We do that for one another. And as you would finish your shows every night for us and say, if I helped you just one little second, forget about your pain and made you laugh, then I have completed my task. I've done my job, right, Richard? That's, that's your correct, saying. Ma'am. That's what that's I right. know of you. That's what, you, that's what I know for just that second. And you have done that continuously. So I hope that we can do it in return for you tonight. Yeah. I, I, I appreciate all that. Thank you. Give me just a second, would you please? Yes, yes. With that, we'll uh, get rid of I'm glasses first. Uh. <laughs> okay, Richard. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, I didn't think I was going to get that broken up telling that story. Uh, no, no, it's perfectly fine. Yeah, well, we, uh, we need I uh, a little assistance really quick. Please bear with us. We gave you host capability. And you need to give that back to us. I don't know how so to do that, Hood. I know. Um, where's Quentin at? Can you have him come uh, over to where Quentin, you come here. He's on the couch. He, would, would you walk him through that key? Uh, uh, he said, hold on a second. He was in the game. Okay. Just a second. Bear with this guy. Oh, the cat. Oh, yeah. I forgot to mention. We got three new additions to the family. That remember that cat that you guys have seen run around me quite a few times on the show? It had kittens. <laughs> so uh, now I've got so much pussy, I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> okay. uh, they want to hand over the hosting capabilities back to them, son. I don't know how to do that. I don't. He, he don't know how to do it either, huh? Okay, Quentin, go to the participants window. I really don't. I'm but, sorry. I okay, don't really. Wait a second. She said go to the participants. Go to the participants window. And yeah. It's like mine. Yeah. And uh, should say make hopes. Uh, how do you say make hopes? More. Stop chat. Okay, I found it. I found it. Okay. Perfect. Did I do it? Yeah, I, I, I meant to make you co host, so I'm going to make you co host right now. Okay. Okay. Now, let's get this show started. <laughs> I agree. Let's get this show started. Well, how you doing? I'm Richard Corp, and my son's just picking up the stuff I knocked off. Uh... There you go. <laughs> how you doing? Welcome to the Zoomathon benefit for Richard Corp, myself, and Like Minds 420. These guys are great. We got a great show for you tonight. We got some comics. We got me. We got. Uh... Oh, hell, we got a, a little bit of everything tonight. There's going to be magic. There's going to be mystery. There might even be love in the air. Then again, there might not. Who knows? But uh, we're going to be here. We're going to make you laugh. And uh, we're going to start the show here. And uh, why don't we start the show with a little bit of uh, mystery, if you will.
Nice. <laughs> yeah, some people say that's amazing. Some people. Thank you. Thank you. Some people say it's amazing. Some people say it's fantastic. I say it's a guy that's got way too much fucking time on his hands. I really do. It's uh, but it's great to be here. It is. I, I love. I love doing comedy. Comedy is my life. My love. My passion. It's the only love I've ever had. That did it take half of my shit when it left. And, uh, but it's it's great to be here, and uh, oh boy, it looks like it's just the four of us, five, six, however many, I can't count. But anyway, uh, I've been doing a lot of things here lately. I had to go to the doctor the other day, and uh, it, it was actually going pretty good until he told me to bend over, and he stuck his finger. Yeah, I'll tell you, I think I need a new dentist. <laughs> yeah, it's, just, it's horrible. I, I, I called my other doctor I, I, I on the phone, and I go, Doc, you know, I got a real bad case of diarrhea. He put me on hold. <laughs> <laughs> That was terrible, terrible, man. And I, I, I don't think my doctor likes me, man. For my birthday this year, he sent me a carton of cigarettes and a crack pipe. <laughs> and a note that said, see you soon. <laughs> but I got lots of doctors, man. I, I got a doctor for every goddamn thing, man. I got a doctor for my heart, my cardiologist. He don't like me. When he put in my pacemaker, he added a dimmer switch, gave it to my kids and told them to have fun. <laughs> okay, well, you know what they say, if you just make one person laugh, you're doing really fucking shitty. <laughs> what they say? Oh, that's what they say, I tell you. I, I've been doing comedy for a long time, man. I have. I I remember doing comedy when you used to have to talk to one of those damn bullhorns. I'm old. I tell you, I'm old. I'm so old. I remember when Elvis Presley was king, Freddie Mercury was king, queen, and Michael Jackson was actually black. <laughs> I tell you, I'm so old. I remember when the worst thing about crack was if you stepped on it, you broke your mama's back. <laughs> uh, yeah. I tell you, it, it, it's a bitch being old, man. It is. It's a lot of things I used to do all night long. No, some of them take me all night long to do. <laughs> And, and, and sex is different when you're my age, man. It is. I mean, I still love sex. But I don't know what's going to come first. My orgasm or my back spasm. <laughs> or the worst, the heart attack. You know. But it's worth it. <laughs> uh, but there are certain good things about being my age. I mean, like nowadays when I ride the bus, People will get, will get up and offer me their seat. Now, that scares me when I go to the bathroom. <laughs> but there's other good things about being my age, like uh, there's certain good things about sex. Have you all ever had sex until you had sex in one of those electric wheelchairs? You ain't had sex until you 69 and Papa Willie at the same damn time. <laughs> I haven't tried that. <laughs> Try it, man. You'll love it. <laughs> You'll love it, man. <laughs> so, either I got to get into a wheelchair or find a girl who's in a wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> or you can rent a wheelchair. <laughs> yeah. People ask me how I got the way I am. Uh, there's two reasons. One, I smoke a lot of fucking dope. And I mean, I don't advocate the use of any illegal smoking substances by those states that 
still want to arrest you for them. But I do have all the informative pamphlets. There's everything you wanted to know about marijuana, but couldn't remember the questions long enough to ask. And my personal favorite, How to Roll a Joint in the Dark by Stevie Wonder. <laughs> and the other reason is I had a fucked up life growing up, man. i tell you, when I was born, people started hating me. The doctor hated me when I was born, honestly. My mom said uh, when I was born, the doctor smacked me on my ass. Then his nurse got in a couple shots. <laughs> it's horrible. He came up to my mom. He goes, Mrs. Corp, I did everything I could, but he pulled through anyway. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> and I don't think my mother really cared for me very much. She didn't breastfeed me. Yeah, I, uh, she sent me next door to a neighbor. Their dog was in heat. Horrible <laughs> life. I tell you, I think I was six years old when I finally figured out that there was no such thing as alpha baby food. <laughs> and, and I can tell sometimes my parents kind of showed it in subtle ways that they didn't like me. Like my dad, he built me a tree swing and he put it next to a brick wall. Yeah. I, <laughs> I asked him one day, go, hey, Dad, how can I get this kite to go higher? He goes, jump off a cliff. Um. I told him, hey, Dad, I want to go ice skating. He goes, son, why don't you wait till it gets warmer? <laughs> <That's funny>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was fucked up, man. It really was, man. Wait till you shed armor. <laughs> Thanks, I tell you, Dale. when I was a kid, I went missing for a couple days. My parents put out a reward for me, dead or alive. Oh. <laughs> a cop found me a couple days later, man. He found me, and he was taking me to the police station. And I go, officer, do you think we'll find my parents? He goes, I don't know, son. There's a lot of places they can hide. <laughs> But I, I was a, I was a completely different parent. I really was. Uh, you know, uh, I, 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 I went about it a different way because I was a single parent. And, you, you know, the worst thing about being a single parent, at least for me, was for the first eight months, my nipples hurt. <laughs> My kid was starving, but he's much better now. But I was a proud parent, man. I used to love my kids, man. I used to love standing over them, just watching them sleep at night, just staring at them and saying, hell, kid looks just like me. Then I realized I was looking at the wrong end. <laughs> uh, but I did. I, I, I really love my kids. Then they started getting older. Started walking and talking, asking questions I didn't want to answer. Like, hey, Dad, why does the cat walk funny with a fork in it? <laughs> why does Mom have an electric rolling pin in the top dresser drawer? And can we have the batteries? <laughs> why doesn't Mama cry when you spank her? And the one that really got to me, how come you don't give me money like the daytime, Daddy? <laughs> A lot of people laugh at that. That kind of irritates me. They're laughing. She was cheating. But I caught her. I did. I came home one morning early. And she wasn't home. So I sat there and waited. An hour later, she comes strolling in through the front door. Her hair was all messed up. Her shirt was on inside out and backwards. And her panties were sticking out of her purse. I said, where the hell have you been? She goes, I was at my sister's. 
lying witch. I spent the night with her sister. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I got her ass, I tell you. You know, but she was, I always knew she was lying. You know, I, I, I knew that, but I didn't know she was lying under the mailman, the milkman, and my fucking cousin. <laughs> but, yeah. Oh, but oh, it's it's bad. It's bad out there. I tell you, I, I tell you, it's so damn bad. Uh, I love my life now. I do. I love being a father. My kids are older now. They uh, they're so damn old. Uh, actually, my youngest just lost his job recently. He was working for the uh, uh, Coca Cola bottling plant out there in Olathe, and they let him go. It seems he tested positive for Pepsi. <laughs> But he's a good kid. He's a good kid. He recently told me, he goes, Dad, I hope you don't mind or you don't get mad, but I like boys, too. He goes, Dad, uh, Son, that's cool, man. That's cool. Whatever makes you happy, I'm behind you all the way. He goes, Dad, that's just fucking freaky. <laughs> Now, the neighbor up the street, maybe. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I've, I've been uh, doing that aversion therapy. You know what aversion therapy is? When you think of something or do something that you shouldn't be doing, you give yourself a little thing with the rubber band on the wrist. And uh, I, I, I've been doing some of this aversion therapy. And... Uh, but there's a, a thing about it. They say that here, if you, uh, whatever you're supposed to be trying to stop playing with or doing, it will come out in your rubber band here. And uh, the rubber band will. For those of you that didn't see it, it's, oops, excuse me, I. Oh, no. <laughs> I hope y'all can see that. <laughs> I hope y'all can see that. That's awesome, Richard. Oh, my God. <laughs> Rich, can you make it a little bigger? <laughs> <laughs> Only if you donate money. <laughs> I'll make it as big as you damn well want it. I'll tell you. <laughs> and if you don't believe me, ask these ladies, because the ladies have seen me pull out a bigger one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I will have to testify to that. <laughs> oh, it gets well, it enlarged uh, for the right price. He'll get it really enlarged, yes. <laughs> hey, I'm going to take a break for a few minutes, and we're going to let somebody else here play around for a little bit, if you don't mind. I need to get a drink. I'm getting a little bit of cotton in my mouth. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to turn it over to our other host, Like Minds. Take it away. Hell yeah. All right, all right, y'all. You guys are tuned in to Mr. Richard Quartz live benefit Zoomathon, trying to raise some money for moving cards for Mr. Court. Uh, the GoFundMe link is on the screen. Please tap it, tap it, and please donate, please donate. Uh, on the brink up next, uh, Simone. I know you're on a time schedule, so would you like to come up next? Sure. Sure. And hi, by the way, I miss you. Oh, yeah, so do I, hon. You're doing you. so miss great. Him. I'm so damn proud of you. Thank you, Richard. I'm very proud of you, Simone. Oh. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh. Yeah, I miss you guys a lot. And I'm sorry I haven't had the, the chance to jump on the, the shows 
uh, more often, you know. Oh, we get it. You're a superstar now. <laughs> You're not the same girl I went to school with. All right. Canada knows you, baby. <laughs> so, without further ado, we're going to bring up Miss Simone Holder. So, um, dating is really, really hard. And then, you know, add a pandemic to it and it sucks even more. And I've never been good at dating. It's always sucked and it's always been convoluted and difficult for me. And so for people who've known me a long time, seeing me with a boyfriend or in a, you know, a stable, uh, calm, not crazy relationship is like, is like a sighting of Bigfoot. You know, in, in that not many people have seen Bigfoot, but everybody wants Bigfoot to have a boyfriend and they don't <laughs> understand why she doesn't have one because she's sweet and she's cute and any Sasquatch would be lucky to have her. Uh, somebody asked me if I was a, if I was afraid of ending up alone and I was like, yeah, I am. But I just thought it was so insensitive because when they asked me, my cats were right there. <laughs> liking cats or at least not hating cats is a non-negotiable to going out with me and I was on a date and and the date was like oh I hate cats and I said to myself okay this isn't going to work this isn't going to go anywhere so without breaking eye contact I slowly pushed his drink off the table then I jumped up and ran out of the bar at top speed <laughs> I think we all have a bad date threshold, you know, that uh, like the worst date possible, regardless of who it's with, like you could be out with the person of your dreams, but if you do this particular activity, you'd be like, kill me now. For me, that's hiking. Don't take me on a hike. Like, what are you thinking? I don't, I don't want to go on a hike. I have a strict no cardio rule for dates, <laughs> you know? And the thing is, I'm not the outdoorsy type. I don't like being outside. Like I like to look out the window and go, oh, it looks really beautiful out there from in here. I don't need to be out there. I don't want to. I've always been like that, even since I was a kid. But that's all that, you know, it tends to backfire on me because white people are always trying to get me to go into the woods with them. And they say, it's fun, it's relaxing, it'll clear my head. And I'm like, no, I don't believe you. Because white people have no sense of, 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 of danger, you know, no concept of danger because they probably have no natural predators. And, you know, the woods were designed to kill us, but white people like walking in the woods and hiking in the woods and kayaking and some of them like sleeping in there. I don't get it. Like, if you ever see me in the woods, somebody dragged me in there against my will. That's a hate crime, by the way. I tried to escape. I got lost, and now I'm actively trying to die. <laughs> for help. But if I suggest that we go into the woods, that we take a hike, it will not end well for you, because I'll definitely kill you in there. <laughs> And I think the like, <laughs> I think the only worst thing, the only thing worse than being bad at dating is when somebody tries to bond with you over being bad at dating. And in my in my case, it's always some some conventionally hot woman who's like trying to bond with me by telling me how hard dating is for her. And she's like, oh my God, it's so hard. I hate it. I hate it. Dating's hard. And I'm like, really? universally appealing woman. Dating is hard for you. Hmm, okay. You Scarlett Johansson look-alike motherfucker, fine. Dating's hard for you? <laughs> What's so hard about it? Too many viable options? Give me a break. Sit down, Becky. If it's hard for her, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> and in the dating, in the dating scenario, in the dating realm, 
there's always the the toxic and the immature people. Like those people are everywhere, but they seem to be more concentrated, like on the dating apps and the dating scenario. And the thing is, rejection hurts. Rejection sucks. Nobody wants to be rejected. But the thing is, you accept it gracefully and you move on with your life. So I turned a guy down for a date. And I, because I realized like, this isn't, you know, he gave me weird feelings and I didn't want to, I didn't want to pursue it any further. So I replied, when he asked me out, I replied with no, thank you. You know, and he came back with, you're a fat bitch. And I was doing you a favor. I was appalled at his improper use of your. <laughs> you are U-R is the second person possessive used to describe something belonging to you. Y-O-U apostrophe R-E is a contraction of you are, you illiterate oh. ass bitch. <laughs> I also deal with microaggressions. We all know those. They're supposed to be compliments, but they're anything but. You know, in the, in the majority of cases of people who are saying them are well-meaning, but they're still racist as fuck. You know, they're not good. So the answer to, can I touch your hair? Is no. It will always be no. No, you may not touch my hair. I'm not a llama in a petting zoo. You can't just pet me. <laughs> I'll let you touch my vulva before I let you touch my hair. <laughs> You speak, so well. you speak so well that one grinds my gears i hate that one the most because it implies that speaking was an issue for me and that up until recently i was all like <laughs> and now i can use words <laughs> somebody somebody told me to go back to africa recently and in that split second, in that split second, I had to decide if I had the emotional bandwidth to tell them, A, I was born and raised in Montreal, Canada. Um, my family hasn't been African for generations. Uh, I wouldn't survive in Africa. It's too hot. And <sighs> Africa is a continent, not a country. So if he wants me to go back, he has to be a little more specific on where he wants me to go. <laughs> so I decided I didn't have the energy. So I was just like, fine, I'll go back. I'll go back. Let me know when you're ready to leave since you brought me here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Kill <it. laughs> a few uh. months ago, uh, a singer, I think it was Megan Trainer, was on a podcast and she announced on this podcast that when she was having her house built, she had two toilets installed side by side so that she and her husband could go together. Oh. Like, ugh, exactly, <laughs> right? Right? Like, if that's not love. codependence. Like, I don't know what is. You know, and I don't, I, like, I hate, couple, I hate couples who dress alike. How do you think I feel about the ones who shit together? <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's so gross like i don't understand why for some people doing bathroom stuff in front of each other is like some flex as to how as to how loyal or strong or committed they are to their friendship or their relationship like i don't want anybody that comfortable with me ever you know i, I don't want that level of comfort around me and like, okay, fine, bodily functions, everybody poops. I know that, I get that, I understand that. I just don't want to experience it with you. you know? <laughs> and don't, don't, even, don't even think about talking to me through the door. Like, don't do that. Just leave, just leave altogether. Give, let me go in peace, come back in about 20 minutes, okay? Maybe half hour. <laughs> or a half hour. <laughs> yeah, around, so let's stretch it out to a half hour. hour. <laughs> <laughs> but just leave me be. You know, and the thing is, like, if a man farts in front of me, I'm not, ooh, he's so comfortable with me. No, I'm like, ugh, he just friend zoned me in the grossest possible way. Like, yuck, like, ugh, that's gross. Don't do that to me. You know, and if I ever just lean over and let one rip in front of anybody, that is my aggressive, nonverbal way of saying, we're done. 
<laughs> so I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of, of ballet documentaries. Um, but I especially love the, the documentaries about the seedy underbelly of the ballet world. Like in the 19th century, no self-respecting ballerina had fewer than three lovers at any given point in time. One for prestige, one for money, and one for love. I would kill to have three lovers on rotation at any given point in time. I would kill for that. I don't even care what, I don't care what they're for. I don't care. It doesn't matter. I don't give a fuck. It doesn't matter. You know, one for shoes, one for car maintenance, one for chicken nuggets. <laughs> I had a I had a birthday about three weeks yeah three weeks ago was my birthday and I turned 55 and I decided that I'm ready to become a sugar mama I am <laughs> you know like I but I, I don't have sugar mama money though like I have a good job I've got benefits insurance I know my way around a dick but no sugar mama money <laughs> I'm more of a Splenda mama because the most I can do is lavish him with monthly transit passes and spoil him with, with Dunkin' Donuts gift cards. You know? And the guy I've been flirting with, he calls me mama. It's, it's okay. It's cute. He's really young, so it's more like mama. <laughs> I have a thing for younger men I always have. And I, I embrace my cougar status. Technically, I'm a jaguar because I'm in my 50s. You know, and there's a whole thing. I don't know if you guys are aware. There's a whole thing called the feline scale. It goes from mm. kitten to like saber-toothed tiger or something. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and technically, I, like we all know the, the, the global term of cougar, but technically, I'm a jaguar because I'm in my 50s. And... You know, I've had people, you know, I've, I've been with people, I've been with men like up to 20 years younger than me. Because the thing is, I don't look, I look young, so I can get away with it. But people have been like, why? Like, why so young? And I'm like, because I can, you know, <laughs> I can. Like, I'm pretty, I'm sexy, I have no gag reflex. Like, what's not to love? <laughs> what's not to love? I need to get your phone number her phone. Oh. <laughs> oh, in the chat, please. <laughs> <laughs> the, the digits. <laughs> but uh, somebody I was, a, a man I was dating uh, asked me, oh. wanted me to slap him and spit in his face. And I was like, okay, cool. I can do that. And, but when the time came to do it, I couldn't, I couldn't. Because to me, spitting is so gross and to spit onto someone is so disrespectful, even though he's into it, I couldn't do it and my mouth dried up. So I was like, and I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. So I overcompensated with the slap. I slapped the fuck out of him. I slapped the taste out of his mouth. I slapped him into next week. I Muhammad Ali his ass. Thank you very much. That's my time. <laughs> wow thank you simone thank you thank you, you thank, thank you. you that was great that was <laughs> fantastic <laughs> simone time, so oh yeah give her a big hand everybody oh man she was great uh, yeah. You're gonna be you're gonna be Canada's greatest export soon. You watch, <laughs> you watch. You. You're gonna hit the states and you well, you're gonna you're gonna explode, hon. Thank you're you. You're fantastic. Thank you, Richard. Oh Richard, man, that was fu that was fucking funny. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> oh, we got a couple other people that just joined us. Uh, Richard Older and an old dear friend of mine, Mr. Dell Hilton. Uh, yeah, he's the only comic I, that I ever worked with on the road that actually made me look clean cut. And, <laughs> uh, how you guys doing? Doing good, man. How are you? Oh, fat, good looking, modest, mostly modest. 
Mostly modest. You're killing modest. Oh, hell. Damn, Skippy, man. When you're this fucking pretty, <laughs> you know, you got, you got, you just got to fucking work at it, man. <laughs> and, uh, how are you doing, Dale? You on, you on mute, bud. Unmute. <laughs> there we go. Hey. It's my first, day, first day with a phone without a cord on it. Um, <laughs> I'm doing good, man. I'm I'm having a weird day, man. So that's why I was late. My woke up, my tire was flat, and uh, that's not even a joke. You're like, what's the punchline? I don't have one. I uh, I don't know. Uh, boy, I I just came in right in the middle of Simone. Is that her name? Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. How do you follow that? She just tore it up, man. What a, what a good job. Thank and. You. Uh, uh, but, um, so I don't know the order or anything like that, but, um, uh, uh, Richard, man, it's, uh, I'm, I'm glad to be doing this for you. I'm, I'm hoping that you're doing all right, man. How are you doing? Uh, well, I, I'm, I've, uh, got a little bit of a reprieve. I finally got somebody at the courthouse to listen to me and they said they can't change the law, but they gave me some extra time to get out. So uh, that's, that, that's a good thing, but now I I'm still trying to find a place today, man, those waiting lists that you got to be on for like a year and shit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, and, that uh, suck, man. Well, yeah, I, I tell you, I, I, I've never thought things was going to get like this, but, uh, I mean, I don't, don't really want to blame nobody, but, uh, that little rubber band I pulled off earlier. Oh, you didn't see the rubber band. Did you? No, uh, -uh. No, uh, uh, I took a rubber band and just uh, sort of played around with it until it. Uh, this is what I think all government officials are. <laughs> I concur. Uh, that's what I think of our fucking right. government, goddamn right now, man. They're a bunch of fucking dicks, you know. It's. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I, I, yeah, I, I, oh, that's what I t and, and what really pisses me off, man, is not only are they telling me I have to leave this house after 25, you know, I've lived here forever, man. Shit. Yeah. 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 And, and they say I have to leave the house and then they're sending people by and they're finding me because I won't do repairs outside. <laughs> you need to paint your house. You're making me leave. You paint the fucking house. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. They are, they're, they're fighting me for repairs on the damn house, and they're making me leave the fucking house. They want you to fix uh, it and then go away. We need you to it, fix it up and make it look pretty and then go, and then go. We yeah. don't want you here. That's yeah. Bullshit, man. That's oh, yeah. I, I have actually probably got a judge to listen to, and, you know, hell, I'm in bad health. I'm not hooked up to a fucking heart monitor. You know, but yeah. you know, sometimes, sometimes yeah. that's fucking pretty cool. You know, you've had some health issues lately. Yes. If you ever yes, get a, yeah. Well, well, I did. I fucked with the nurses one day at the nursing station. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was laying, I was laying in the bed after they put in my heart, my uh, pacemaker and I started masturbating. <laughs> Man, lights and buzzers started going off everywhere. People come running to my room. And as soon as they hit the door, man, I shot. <laughs> uh, missed the doctor by this fucking much, man. It was... <laughs> oh, you got, you know, but you got to have fun, man. You got to have fun. <laughs> That's yeah. That's fun at somebody else's expense. Here, here's some lotion. <laughs> <laughs> well, they give it to you free in the hospital, man. They give you those right. little mini jars. Hey, quit and give I, me a lighter. I hit the Jergen soap pump a little too hard, and um, <laughs> now the doctor's blind. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you know, I, I you. I, I talked about my doctors earlier, dude, and I did. Oh, man. Uh, my dentist is awful. I tell you, I, you know, uh, he, he finally figured out a way to uh, stop it, us from noticing his bad breath so much. Yeah, he, he doesn't wear sleeves on his shirt anymore. It's horrible. <laughs> and, uh, oh. 
my my doctor's awful. I, I I've never had never had a good doctor, man. You know, my proctologist is Doctor Big Finger. You know, it's. <laughs> <laughs> and the fucker won't take off the damn ring either. It's really bad. <laughs> uh, it, it, this is what I think of our government. Oh. They should be up and smoke. <laughs> wow. Have you done the dick and balls trick yet? Well, I guess you need somebody. Oh, I'm interrupting something important. Oh, we can do that. That's right. Yeah, yes. we can talk, man. This, this, this is our celebration. This is a poor man, that. you know. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I was, uh, you know, I, I'll, I'm really actually waiting for somebody to actually donate and see. That's going to surprise me. I, because I, I only know one person that actually will, and that's going to be Elliot Three. You watch. And is he, uh, <laughs> is he on? Is he? Is he going to be on the show? Uh, he's he's. He told me to send him the stuff, and uh, but you know he's on vacation right now somewhere with his wife in a beach he's somewhere. On vacation. He's always on vacation. And well, I, and dude, I, he's the richest motherfucker we know. You know. <laughs> and God bless him. I'm not. I'm not giving him hell for that. I'm like, he's like where are you at? I'm on vacation. Oh, where are you going next week? I'm on vacation. <laughs> Stay at home and play Scrabble. Yeah. Uh, but. Uh, so anyway, are we are when uh, are we oh. all uh, is this thing going on right now? Yeah, we're going on right now. This is a benefit for me. I'm the co-host along with uh, Kiki and Ms. V. And uh, for those of you out there that are anybody listening, uh, this is a benefit show to help raise money for my plight. And uh, I am uh, being removed from my home by a very wicked government or as I like to call them, a bunch of dicks. And uh, <laughs> please, if you can help, uh, if you can't help, please just watch, support, you know, let us make you laugh. I make people laugh. That makes me happy. It really does. It's one of the goals I've always had in my life. Just ask any woman I've ever had sex with. They'll tell you they enjoyed the laughs. And... Uh, <laughs> You know, uh, I dated a lot of strange women, man. I, I actually dated a hooker once. Yeah, I did. But, but she was a hooker with a motto. You know, her motto was, <laughs> she, man, I think you remember, you might remember her, Dale. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Penny, Penicillin Penny. Right. <laughs> yeah, her motto was, you know, a penny for your thoughts, $50, and we can act them out. <laughs> I, I remember. I, her. I tell you, I, I don't want to say she sl fucked around a lot, man, but she sucked so much dick, swallowed so much sperm. Every time she'd belch, you could hear a kid giggle. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, I tell you, I tell you, she. <laughs> yeah, she set up with so many guys she couldn't they remember did. their names, so she gave us numbers. <laughs> I called her hun. She called me one thousand and one. Oh. <laughs> uh, but she was a nice girl, a nice girl. Uh uh I mean shit. Cheap, very cheap, you know. Bless her. Half heart. a six pack, you know, but Anyway, that joke I just did about the um, every time she burped, you could hear a kid giggle. I've done that before. I did that at a place here in town called Harley's Hideaway, and then a friend of mine posted it on YouTube. And all of a sudden, I'm getting a few hundred hits. Matter of fact, I'm up right now. It doesn't sound like much, but over 600 hits on that That's video. True. That's good. Wow. And uh, that's a lot. Nice. I'm at the grocery store one day, and uh, James, I was telling you about this earlier. Uh, this is a true story. I was at the grocery store one day, and this little boy, 10 years old, and his mother start following me around the store and pointing. And I'm getting a little confused here, and I'm looking, I'm making sure I'm zipped up, nothing showing, and I'm not stealing anything. and uh, following me, 
And finally, the little boy walks up to me. And the mom standing next to him, and the little boy looks at me and goes, hi. I go, hello. He goes, you know, every time my sister belts, I can hear a kid giggle too. <laughs> and I'm, what? <laughs> uh, and I'm looking at the mother. I'm going, ma'am, I don't. I I don't know you. I have never talked to this kid before. I I, I don't what well, uh, you know. Uh, um, don't. She goes. Oh, don't worry about it. He recognized you and saw you on YouTube, and him and his friends have watched you a hundred times. I'm going. And you let them. <laughs> <laughs> And the mother goes, oh, me and my husband just think you're funny. We think you're hilarious. But we had to explain him the joke. He didn't understand it at first. <laughs> now, wait a minute. <laughs> How old is your son? Ten years old. So you're explaining your son a blowjob joke. That's not good. Oh, yeah. Like I said, we think you're funny. Can you do his birthday party? <laughs> <laughs> Only if I get signed waivers from every fucking parent. <laughs> right. Uh, and that is a true story. Uh, wow. Yeah, and they actually want me to do his birthday party this July. <laughs> <laughs> And they want the adult show. And yes, Dell, they want the big dick, too. Well, <laughs> what's going on in that family? Um, uh, wow. Like I said, I, I, I got to make... Um, <laughs> you gotta hey, but they're willing to pay me $300, so, you know. Well, if that's what it takes to make $300, then we're all happy for you. Yeah, well, hey, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, you know me, I'll do anything for money. Fuck. I know. We, yeah. Uh, you've seen some of my damn shows. Oh, I've been involved with some of your shows. That's what I'm talking about, buddy. This uh, man, if, if you do not know Richard Corp, Richard Corp, uh, uh, for any younger comics out there and you want to get your teeth sharpened, you work with Richard Corp because he'll get you some gigs. Um, and, and, and I love you, man, but, um, there, there are some tough gigs that Richard will get you. Uh, my first time headlining, this is a true story <laughs> for everybody. He's already laughing about it. My first headlining or closing show, uh, I had to do 45 minutes in front of a, well, they got double booked. And uh, what was going on that night was the finals. It was the Super Bowl of this pool tournament. It was the last game, but it was a pool tournament for the death. For the death. And they wanted no part of comedy. They fucking hated my guts. And I didn't get anything out. I mean, I didn't even really start. And they're like, I'm not making fun of the deaf people, but as far as heckling goes, you're not going to win. And um, <laughs> they hated my guts and they would flip me off and tell me, fun -o, fun -o. any chance that they could get, I couldn't return fire. And uh, it went downhill from there. And, uh, but luckily at the end of the show, Richard had women showing their boobs and putting them on top of his head. He gets all the titty. He got all the titty and I got nothing. I got, I got deaf people yelling at me during their Super Bowl of pool tournament. That was my first time headlining. Rich <laughs> That's, hey, that's I, the kind hey, of you and he's got to see the titties. I just posed, she just put them above my damn head. You felt them. Made me look like fucking Mickey forehead. Mouse with nipples. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you got to feel those warm things on your forehead. I got to see them. But I also got to see deaf people. Deaf people. <laughs> um, does that mean? I, I'm we had good there. gigs too. Shit, we had Higginsville and some of those other places. And... Higginsville. Oh, we'll get to Higginsville. But uh, there's a time <laughs> you brought your first son, his young, his oldest son. Oh. Uh, this is true. Yeah, yeah. Talk, check this out. He brings his oldest son, but at the time Johnny was like five, and he was trying to do comedy. 
So Richard brings his son to this bar called Big Chucky's. And Big Chucky's was in the middle of the hood. And it was a bar for really old, retired cops and highway patrolmen. And that drank like hard. They drank really, really hard. And little Johnny was the first one up. And little Johnny is looking at this big guy, this giant guy. And um, and uh, the, the guy just simply looks down at Johnny and goes, what the fuck is this? And he says it to little Johnny. And and now to this day, if you bring it up to him, he's like, uh, do you, hey, do you remember that show? And he's like, no, no, no. No, I don't remember. No, no. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> but he he scarred his children. That was Big Chucky's. Then we were on the road one time. I'm I'm telling these stories because I, I want Go people for it. to take notes on uh, <laughs> when you have to work with Richard Corp. Um, great guy gets good paying gigs. Um, but uh, uh, like I wouldn't go to a a, a Chinese restaurant. Um. <laughs> All the time. Well, an all-you-can-eat Chinese restaurant in the middle of western Kansas, if that makes any sense at all. There's a Chinese restaurant in, in, western, in the middle of western Kansas. And if anybody's ever been in western Kansas, you know that that's the flat part on the globe that you set on the table. That's, that's how flat and nothing, <laughs> there's nothing in, in western Kansas. And um, <clears throat> they know this because... We're eating, and I and I eat, Richard's eating a hush puppy, and and I look at it, and I'm like, "Whoa, dude, stop! Don't eat that!" And and I and we both look at the same time, and it's not just a hair coming out of the hush puppy batter. It's not just a <laughs> hair. It's like this. It's it's it's, 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 it's a like fucking this. beard. It's a fucking beard coming out of the fucking <laughs> goatee. And um, so what is it? Richard goes, well, I'm not eating that one. And he sets it down. And I'm like, I'm not eating anymore. And he goes, and he just starts eating the rest of his food. And I'm like, I don't know if that's really safe. I don't feel like being contaminated with barber hair. I don't know. Anyway. But Richard did get me, uh, I, I will say this, one of my best gigs, it's 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 arguably my highest paying gig. And uh, I, I do want to uh, say this, um, a guy named, um, <clears throat> shit, what was his name? Um, Vic? Yeah, Vic Dunlop. Thank you. Vic Dunlop, if you go on Google, or Google, if you can do anything <laughs> on Google, 20 years ago, Google had a completely different meaning. Anyway, um, uh, YouTube, if you look up Richard Pryor's roast, uh, it's uh, Richard Pryor had a TV show for like an hour. And um, there's all kinds of uh, old celebrities on there, including uh, a guy named Vic Dunlop, who hosted this show that I'm about to tell you about. Richard Pryor's obviously on there. And then there's another guy on there, and they don't pay a lot of attention to him because he's brand new at the time. Uh, they just, just a few minutes, and they didn't hardly talk about this guy. Uh, his name was uh, Robin Williams. Uh, it was uh, before Robin Williams hit it big. And this is all one show. And Vic Dunlop from that show ended up being the host of this show that I was on. And it was for Laughing Hyena Records. And um, the the deal was is uh, they recorded you whatever they kept. They gave you 50 bucks a minute. And the guy that went on before me, I won't mention his name. He's a nice guy, nice kid. You know, he's been around a while. But um, his opening joke killed. It was like a, a home run, knocked it out of the park. He couldn't buy a laugh after that. He, <laughs> he tanked. And I, 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 we all have our bad days and everything like that as, as far as comics goes. But he was, it wasn't his night. And as I was right on after him and Vic whispers to me, he goes, uh, he, he, he says, uh, go longer. I'm like, all right, Vic Dunlop just told me to go longer. Fuck yeah, I will. And I was supposed to do 10 minutes. I did like 13. Uh, Laughing Hyena Records ended up keeping 12 of it, and I got a paycheck for 600 bucks. And uh, I will never forget that. So thank you, Richard. That was uh, 
hell of a show, hell of a paycheck. And uh, so not all of your gigs are hell gigs, although yeah. it was at a bowling alley. Anyway. <laughs> um... <laughs> hey, I took Tommy Chong to a fucking bowling alley, and it's one of his favorite gigs. Was Legends it there? Down in, Legends down in St. Joe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. And uh, he still talks about that, that, how the fat fucker from Kansas took him to a damn bowling alley. And, he, <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know. Uh, I'm the fat fucker from Kansas, y'all. So uh, He's not the fat guy from NYPD Blue. No, uh, no, 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 not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm Ron Jeremy's grandfather. Right. <laughs> 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 Hey, Rich. Uh oh, hey, somebody Rich. left. Yeah, hey, um, yes. Hey, Rich, I hate to but we have a uh, we have a special uh, message for you. Okay. All right. Let's see. Let's see it. Hey, Richard Court. Oh, this is Miss Carlisle. Miss Barbara. And you must know that I must really care a lot about you. I got to love you in some kind of way if I get on live with no makeup on. Am I taking up too much time? Am I? No, no, man. We, we got Not plenty of time to take up. No, no, Okay, so to... go ahead, Dale. Uh, I, is, I, I didn't know if you guys had a special message. I'll shut up for a minute. Okay, give us one second. Okay, so let sure. me get the sound right on that, and then can we bring up uh, James, James the Comedian? Sure, like I sure. Acid. Uh, we'll listen to the message, and I'll bring up James the Comedian. All right. Okay. In, in, the, right. Other <laughs> in, in the other order. James, you ready? <laughs> oh, in the other order. Okay. Hey, I'm back. Hey, thank you for sitting in on the Zoomathon for Richard Corpse. Uh, trying to find a home, and uh, we've got a plethora of comedy here still. Simone Holder killed it earlier. If you haven't didn't see it, please rewind and fast. Oh man, you'll love it. But now we got another surprise for you. This guy's fantastic. This guy's great. This guy is what's his name? James the comedian. <laughs> Give it up. <laughs> All right, thank you, Rich. That that's an introduction right there. <laughs> this guy's also so freaking awesome. He's not worth remembering. <laughs> that's so awesome. <laughs> hey, Rich. Uh, sorry about the situation you find yourself in. I'm a uh, pleasure to be here. I want to get the donation started off with a significant. I'm talking about a massive donation. So uh, I got a dollar bill for you right hey, now. Hey, all right. Thank you, sir. Thank you from the bottom dollars. of my heart. Thank you. Not exactly going through the phone, so we got to yeah. figure figure that out. Uh, but anyway, um, I'm in the military. I've been in the military for almost 20 years. Um, I'm in the Air Force, and you know a lot of people like to pick on the, the military. I like to pick on the Air Force. Call us the Chair Force. I right? always sitting at Chair Force, right? <laughs> and uh, you know it's kind of true. Like our pilots are sitting down when they're flying around. I'll give you that. Um, we just like to be comfortable in the Air Force. You know, we like working Wi-Fi. Uh, we like air conditioning. And I got to be honest with you, I've been around the world, Africa, the Middle East, Europe, Asia. We like our fucking chairs. I guess if you're real with you, okay? <laughs> uh, I got like four in my office right now in case one of them breaks. Um, you know, we're going to be having like chair auditions next week to see uh, if we can get any good replacements figured out. Um. You know, so I got almost 20 years in the Air Force. Like I said, we like to be comfortable. I went to one base in the Middle East. It was operated by the Air Force. And I get this. They had a place where you could get full body massages, manicures, and pedicures, right? So picture this. You got a, a, a Marine who's like, all right, how's that weapon? You got enough rounds? Got enough ammunition? You good? Soldiers are like, all right, you had your canteen. Got your equipment? You good to go? Ready for this convoy? You got an airman out there going, yeah, that's that's not gonna work. I got to make an appointment for those. Yeah, this is not <laughs> right. <laughs> Sergeant comes busting in. You know what I'm saying? He's like, "Hey, you ready for that mission?" Like, actually, no. I just got these done. I just got these done. I got <laughs> yeah. Can we can we postpone that? I got a petty in a couple hours. You know. <laughs> gotta love the Air Force, man. We like our comfort. Um, like I said, so I did about 20 years almost now. Um. In the Air Force, I see some messages coming in, so thank you for that. 
Um, I don't think I could have served in, in, in the Navy, though, because those cats do about six months at sea, and they don't go too far. I don't see it's six months in the ocean, six months at sea. I don't think I could have done that. But that's probably why every six months the naval population surges, because every six months those sailors come home, and they do the opposite of what Donald Trump did in the Paris Climate Accord. They don't pull out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're good semen, ladies and gentlemen. You know what I'm saying? They're good semen. <laughs> We're good about launching those torpedoes. So, um, like I said, um, military father. Um, um, I have two kids. Uh, and for Father's Day, my, my, my kids are amazing. So for Father's Day this year, they got me a coffee mug. And I love drinking coffee. I'm a big fan. And the mug says, coolest dad in the galaxy. And I was like, man, I don't know what I did to deserve that. Like, I have no idea what I did to deserve that honor. Apparently, all I had to do was leave them in California. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like who knew that? Who knew that? Like leave your kids getting an award. You know what I'm saying? Like, all right, step right up. Oh, good times. But um, like I'm married. I've been married for about 17 years, and my wife is also in California. And I'm coming to you guys from Florida. When I got orders to come to Florida, my wife said I'm not going to Florida, and the kids aren't going either. And I was like. Fucking sweet, fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. So fucking happy. <laughs> I love my wife. I love my kids. I miss them very much. Um, what I love doing too is I love going back home and picking them up from school sometimes, because uh, you know I, I don't get to see them as much as I'd like, and uh, teachers don't always see me. They don't always recognize me. And often, and my kids are black because I'm married to a beautiful black woman from Kenya. Um, and so my kids are black. Society's going to see my kids as black. And that's cool with me. Uh, they're great kids. Um, but I love messing with these teachers when I go to pick them up from school. Because every once in a while, a white teacher will ask me, is, is that your dad? <laughs> and I'm like, no, I, uh, <laughs> I was just in the neighborhood and thought I'd, you know, stop in and see if I could leave with any black kids, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> Those two look like they could use a dad right there. Those two. <laughs> <laughs> you know? and, and clearly I'm pointing to my children when I say that. It'd be so fucked up if I'm pointing at somebody else's kids, you know, those <laughs> traumatize them, poor fucking child. But, you know, just to see the face on the, the teachers, it, it, it's incredible. I love it. Um, yeah, but like I said, um, I've been out here in uh, Florida for about a year on my own, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's been a struggle. It's been real. It's been awful lonely. Uh, it's been so lonely that I've been calling and ordering DoorDash meals just to meet new people. You know? <laughs> this, uh, this Last night, this young lady, Samantha, drops by, and she's bringing me a chicken sandwich. And uh, I said, hey, you want to come inside? <laughs> and she said, do I look like a hoe? And I said, why do you think I'm asking? I mean, come on. <laughs> Where are you going? Come back. So, I've been trying like fucking crazy. I've not been able to get Samantha back on my DoorDash, you know? It's it's always Steve and Bill. All those other nonsense. Anyway, so like I said, my kids are in California. Uh, I'm out here. And we're, we're trying our best to make it work. And I got to be honest with you guys. I've been really concerned about public education. Like, my brother has a high school diploma. I told him the other day, I said, Jay, I've been to the Middle East several times. He says, yeah, I like Nebraska this time of year. <laughs> Dude, this guy's thinking the Middle East is the Midwest. This fucking guy. Right? So, you know. 
like that intelligence or that stupidity, however you want to look at it, ladies and gentlemen, you know, it can skip generations. I was praying it would skip my kids. Apparently it has impacted my daughter. Okay. She had an assignment the other day where she had a map of the United States and she had to label the, uh, all the states and the capital cities. I mean, this is easy stuff to do for a kid in the seventh grade. All right. With access to Google. All right. Now she turns to me and says, dad, does uh, Utah border Ohio? And I'm like, uh, no, kid. What fucking map are you looking at? How about you get a map? <laughs> of the fucking state? What the hell's going on? So she does that, and she's moving along, and she says, Dad, I'm on Montana now. And I said, great, you're on Montana. What's the country just north of Montana? And she says, there's a country north of Montana? Oh, fuck. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, sweetheart. That's uh it's Canada. It's the uh it's the border we don't mind if you come in from. That's uh that's that is. It's the border we don't seem to care about, but you know. Yeah. So so needless to say, like some of y'all, I'm pretty concerned about public education in the US of A. However, I have to tip my hat to the state of Georgia. They got a phenomenal educational system. Specifically, this one teacher in the second grade, she was going about her lesson plan. She was teaching math and arithmetic and history. And she's teaching 19 kids in her class. And she decides to masturbate in front of these 19 kids. And I heard that story and I was thinking, there's only 19 kids in these classes in Georgia? What, <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? There's like 30 children in my daughter's class. I don't know where fucking Utah is. <laughs> Incredible. You know? And I got to thinking too, I was like, I've got to get my son into her classroom, right? Like, think of all the things my son would learn with her tutelage. Understand? Like, you know, she reading and writing and all, you know, math and algebra, all that good stuff. And he might even see some pussy. I mean, you know. <laughs> I mean, that's important. You know, that's, that's right up there with like honor roll and recess, you know. Seeing some pussy, there you go, you know. <laughs> but it also makes me wonder about the quality of the pussy that was visible and available to these kids. You know, I think, um, you know, fathers in the room probably understand we don't want our kids exposed to anything that's not quality pussy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you, know, you know, it can't be like messed up, fishy smell and molasses, horrible crap, you know. So I think we should all like assess the pussy before it's displayed. I think that's very important. <laughs> I'm gonna, definitely going to bring that up at my next parent teacher conference. If I ever get the opportunity, I'm like, are you displaying quality pussy in your classrooms? That's, that's what I want to know. Oh goodness. Good times. Um, interesting. I used to be an Uber driver. Uh, a while back, I used to be an Uber driver, and uh, I picked this guy once up for a trip, and he, after a night of drinking, he gets in the front seat of my car, and George Strait is playing. The song is The Chair, right? Real beautiful song. Uh, he had a reaction I was not expecting to The Chair, ladies and gentlemen. He was all like, yeah, yeah, it's a fucking chair, yeah. you know? Uh and I was like, that, that's kind of odd. That's a little strange. That's a little overzealous for George Strait in the chair. Um, <laughs> but whatever. And so we're driving down the road. And he says to me at some point, do you know what you really want to do? And I said, no, I don't. Uh, and he worked up the courage to finally share. He said, I want to suck your dick. <laughs> okay. And I said, really? Huh. Wow. It's interesting. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm a married man, right? I don't get that ordinarily. You know what I'm saying? 
Like, it's got to be a fucking holiday, anniversary, birthday. I got a guy volunteering his services here, right here, ladies and gentlemen. Now. And like, who am I to say no to this guy? He's willing, he's available. His mouth looks like it sucked a few cocks, you know? <laughs> Why should I turn the guy down is legitimately what I'm trying to say. Uh, so I gave it some thought, and I eventually I didn't take him up on the offer, but damn, think about how much fun I could have had if I did. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Oh, good times. Could have fought again. Uh, anyway, my name is James. Uh, James Hodgman. I go by James the Comedian Online. Uh, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, and all that happy jazz. I'm in Florida right now. I'll be in California soon. And I want to close out my set by thanking Rich and everything that he, uh, he's been through uh, and everything. But I also want to mention real quick is Crisis Text Line. Uh, I volunteer as a crisis counselor um, nice. for a crisis text line. And if you're going through some hard times, going through some difficult stuff in life, and who isn't, right? Who's not going through something like that? Just text hello to 741-741, and you can be connected to a 24-7 crisis counselor. You can be anonymous. It doesn't cost you a dime. They don't call your friends. They don't phone it in to anybody. You know, I was talking to them last week because somebody told me I had a small dick. So, you know, it's uh, <laughs> it, it's good source for everything. <laughs> that was awesome. Thank all you. right. Give it up to James the Comedian, everybody. All right. All right. All right. All right. Man. Great set. Great set, James. Hey, I'd like to welcome a couple people. I'd like to welcome Gabriella Ryan. Thank you for coming out to the show tonight, ma'am. Uh, if you'd like to speak, uh, please turn your microphone on. And I'd also like to welcome a longtime person that we really haven't seen, and she still hasn't turned on her picture yet. Miss Anna Mello is here with us this evening. Anna, oh, darling, I've missed you. How you doing, hon? Oh, it's great to see you again. It really is. Uh, Simone's up at the top of my screen. I don't know where she's at on your screen. And, uh, oh, it's great to see you, hon. How you been? Well, I'm in Angola, which is, uh, you know, in Africa. So, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's an experience. I'll yeah. tell you that. Yeah, I well, just wanted to, to give my heart out to Richard and, uh, and tell you, like, you know, everybody needs to, to donate because, you know, he's the Santa of comedy, so. <laughs> Thank you, darling. Oh, I appreciate it so much. It's great to see you, hon. It really is. We miss you here. Whenever you decide to stay awake again, come on to one of the shows. I'd love to, I'd love to see what you've, <laughs> how you've improved. Oh, man. Oh, man. I keep tearing up here. You guys are making me tear up. Uh, Anna, you made me you, you made me cry there, darling. Uh, thank Rich, you. Yeah. Thank you for showing up. It's great to see you. Oh, yeah, it's, 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 uh, we got to squeeze some minutes out of Anna. Anna, would you like to do, do a set tonight? We'd love to have you do a set. Well, you know, it's it's ironic that. Um, I'm here in Africa, and we're we have to donate to to the U.S. But it's it is. <laughs> oh wow! There she wow! Is. What a slam! Oh. <laughs> I love it. Best joke of the night, right there. <laughs> oh, that was fucking funny. The US oh. is the I'll tell you that. Like the US uh, is the, the one country in the world where fat people are the poor people. Like <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Damn. And the truth really hurts on that one. Like, oh man. <laughs> like look at me over here. I am prime rib, you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> wow. you know? I'm, I'm, I'm not Chicken doing as said, but it is what it is. Like uh, I, I've, I'm, re I'm here because uh, Richard is is a great and dear friend, and uh, we we deserve to support him because I, you know, 
he deserves to have a house. You're you're gonna leave Santa without a house? Like, what is this? It's not just for Christmas. So. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. You know, oh. like things in the U.S. are weird. I I just left for Europe right when the war started, and uh, you know. It's it's good that it's on. I'm, I'm from the other side of Europe, but still, we're wondering like, what is Putin gonna do? He, is he gonna put one in, uh, like in terms of a nuclear bomb? I hope not. But whew, scary. I mean, not for me, but for everybody else. Uh, <laughs> like over here, it doesn't hit any. Like, uh, nobody cares about Africa. Is that so. aiming over there? <laughs> <laughs> so they're not gonna hit us like we're gonna be left y'all y'all are y'all are screwed but you know <laughs> us over here like you know i don't look african but i am and uh it's it's strange when i tell people that because they think like if you're from africa why are you white but you know it is what it is like I, i'm also from asia and uh the only thing i have to show that i'm from asia is that i'm good at karaoke uh, <laughs> otherwise, i'm more of a bijan because my grades were always b's and c's just like my tits <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's my time <laughs> oh, God. Oh, damn. <laughs> you have been seen a thousand fucking times miss barbara if she heard that she'd be proud of you yeah, if you guys could get that spot to miss barbara i think miss barbara would really love to hear that Yes. No, I, I haven't. Are we ready? Was, this was riffing. I did not write this down. This was all for you, Richard. Well, thank you, Don. <laughs> well, hey, I you, are, you ought to write it down. You need to keep that. That was fucking funny. The stuff <laughs> you did about the oh. off. You, uh, you know, you, you know, you really made me feel poor when a third world country is donating to me. You know, it's really bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was hilarious. Uh, that was. <laughs> Oh, that was, that was just, good. oh, Hilarious. darling, Hilarious. you have improved a thousand times. You. you really have. I'm very proud of you. I'm proud <laughs> of you. And it's great to see you. You're lovely as ever. Uh, man. You. You're, you're the furthest, you, man. you're probably the friend I had that's the furthest away from me. <laughs> and, uh. which I don't know what that means, but uh, right. it probably I'm means gonna... I'll never fucking stalk you. So, some of us call that a good head start. <laughs> but thank you for coming out start. here tonight, hon. Your set was just fa fantastic. I was oh. oh, I was so proud of that, you know. Uh, I, I've been I, I think I finally figured out how to impress a woman. Uh, this is how I think you should impress a woman. You compliment her. You respect her. You honor her. Cuddle with her, you kiss her, caress her, you love her, you stroke her, you tease her, you comfort her, you protect her, you hug her, you hold her, you spend money on her. You know how to impress a man? Show up naked with the fucking beer. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, I'll do that it. joke may I'll not do get it. very much fucking older, you know. <laughs> hey, Rick. Yes. For that special message? Sure, let's go for the special message. You got it ready? Yeah, all right. We're going to do this special uh, message, and then let's bring up older, okay? And then we'll bring up Richard Older. Yes, ma'am. And then Dale, you'll be after Older. How's that? Yeah. We got about oh, all right. 15 minutes left. All right, here we go. Hey, Richard Court. This is Miss Carlisle. And you must know that I must really care a lot about you. I gotta love you in some kind of way if I get on live with no makeup on. 
I'm headed from the airport right now. I can't be with you on this uh, Zoomathon, but I promise you we will have another one because I gotta prepare for my thing tonight. And uh, I'm just getting back in town and I am tired as I don't know what. So uh, I'm rooting for you. We're gonna do as much as we possibly can. Um, please stay and keep us surprised of your situation. I'm trying to drive and get on back home, but just wanted to let you know I support you 100%. I am gonna make a uh, monetary donation towards your cause this time, and when we do it again, I will do another one. So um, keep your head up and just pray. You know, God changes things. God moves people's hearts. So you got to believe. You got to have the faith of a mustard seed. The size of a mustard seed. You know, not the faith of a mustard seed. You know, you know I'm trying to do some Bible stuff. It's Sunday, you know. Mm. Anyway, so, um, yeah. Keep your head up, man. That, that, that way it'll keep you from slopping all over your shirt. Oh, all right. Uh -huh. I'm out, Richard. Love you. Everybody give it up for Barbara Carlisle, man. Oh. If you guys haven't stopped by for any of her shows, please stop by. She has uh, uh, Cougar Chronicles and uh, Mass uh, Friday and Sundays. I get them confused. One's on Friday, one's on Sunday. Uh, please stop by, watch them. Uh, some of them are very interesting. And uh, uh, some of them uh, just, uh, well... Uh, some of them I don't talk too much because uh, I don't know nothing about uh, some of the stuff. But I still watch them. They're interesting as hell. I like them, and it's very fun. And uh, we have another comedian that's getting ready to come up here. And uh, a lot of people say this is uh, uh, what I looked like when I was younger. And I go, no, I was a lot prettier. But uh, <laughs> he's a good guy. He's a good friend. And... Uh, Give it up for L.A.'s finest, Mr. Richard Alder. Doing this by daylight. Um, you know, as a comic, we're, we're a little nocturnal. So, um, yeah, I'm trying not to burn. Like, I walked into a church. So, we're... Uh, but we're doing this and uh yeah you know what and uh, i've been sharing it on facebook and hopefully we can we can you know get some help going your way um because you're you're a great dude we've been doing shows weekly now for for months together and uh you know your situation sucks but it's really cool that you still make jokes and laugh through it you know and as you say like like laughter helps helps everything you know it heals and it it binds and you know bonds people together and so i'm stoked to be here um to help out and um talking about uber earlier and i i'm doing uber now and i used to do lyft and uh, it's really just like changing from like burger king to mcdonald's it's just different with a shittier reputation um but when i <laughs> But when I was driving for Lyft, um, one time I pulled up to a doctor's office because I got a ride request. And um, sorry, I'm a little bit as uh, as the the host of the set the Tuesday 7 p.m. show, uh, jokes, weeds, and laughs. I have been toking as the toke master, so <laughs> I'm a little high. <laughs> So if you've got them and smoke them or if you're drinking something, hit it while I'm jab while I'm you know jabbering here and uh and enjoy your Sunday afternoon. So I was uh I was at this doctor's office to pick up somebody and this older lady with a cane, you know, moves her way over to the car and gets in and she's like, Richard, we need to leave right now. And I was like, What? <laughs> like what? And she's like Richard, the police are coming. They said that I, you know, that, that I beat a doctor with my cane. Oh, okay. And like she said, the next thing I heard was a knock on the window. And I looked over and there's the sheriff going, ma'am, you need to get out of the car. And she looked at me and she's like, Richard, we need to leave right now. 
And I was like, I don't think that's a good idea. I said, that sheriff lady right there looks serious. And she's like, ma'am, you need to get out right now. I said, you need to get out of this car. She's like, Richie, you need to go. I said, you need to get out of this car, bitch. You're fucking with my money. We're wasting time here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like the sheriff opened the door and I was like, bitch, get out. <laughs> and then that sheriff grabbed that woman and dragged her out of my car. Just kicking and screaming. And I, but the problem was she left her cane. So I rolled down the window and I tossed it out the window. And I was like, good luck, lady. And then I canceled her ride. Well, I didn't actually cancel it. I technically took her to her destination and dropped her off. Uh, because she's not going to be at home to get the money. She's going to jail. So it's fine. <laughs> I mean, if she's going to waste my money, I'm going to take hers. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> um, I was at a memorial service yesterday, which sounds like a bummer. Um, and, and it was, but there was, there was something real peculiar about it. It was that this pastor never really said anything about my, my friend's mother who had passed away. Um, but he talked a lot about salvation and Jesus dying for everyone's sins and how God sent his only son to, to, you know, to take all the sins from, from all the people. And I watched a lot of Dateline. And I was like, if you send your one, who does that? Who does that? Like, if you're an all-powerful God, one, why would you only have one kid? Could, couldn't you make two? I don't know. Like, you made a whole planet. <laughs> you made a bunch of planets. Why one son? Why one? I, I forget it. You couldn't, you couldn't. Like, you're like, well, I need to sacrifice this one. So we'll bring in Tommy. Tommy could be another son. <laughs> I get it. And you send your son to, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, but if this, you're an all-powerful being, you have to sacrifice your own child to convince you to rid people of their sin? What? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of logic is that that's a psychopath <laughs> that's not a, a powerful being like what did you just say I forgive you ta da <laughs> that's it <laughs> but, no I need to go say hey Zeus so he can go get nailed to some wood so that I feel better about forgiving your sins Jesus Christ, that's shitty parenting. For fuck's sake. I just, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. It was a lot of that. And, and I wanted to ask him about it. I wanted to ask him, why did, why did God only make one son, but nine planets? What the fuck? <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's, that's like making 10 prime ribs, but one cheeseburger the fuck <laughs> uh, I don't know I don't, I, I don't know it's there's just there's just a lot of shit that doesn't that doesn't make sense like like when if you've been if you've been convicted of a, a murder and you get the death penalty and they give you the lethal injection they clean the spot where they put the needle in to kill you with alcohol mm -hmm. why <laughs> Like, it, if the needle goes in and gives you the injection, trust me, an infection on your arm is the least of your fucking <laughs> <laughs> You got bigger problems. Way bigger problems. <laughs> Who gives a shit? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, um, that's my time. I know that we're, we're running low on time. We got to fit some more folks in. Um, you can catch me some more on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. for Jokes, Weeds, and Laughs, where our very own Richard Cork closes the show out with comedy and magic, and it's my favorite time of the week. So thank you for your time. Thank you for laughing with us. Um, it's helped Richard a little bit. Uh, a little bit more. <laughs>
<laughs> Thank you very much, Richard. Great set Thank as always, you. man. Very funny guy. Very funny guy. You know, I'd be proud to call you my brother because I actually uh, I might need a kidney. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, sure, I'll but, uh, I, I don't think that, that will come it. later. That will come later. I'll tell you. But thanks uh, anyway. Just keep it in mind. You know. <laughs> oh man, uh, th this has been one great show so far, and we still got one killer motherfucking comic coming up next. Hell yeah! Oh man, and this guy, man, I have traveled over the road with him hundreds and hundreds of miles. We did some hell gigs and ate some crappy fucking food. Uh, but we got stoned the whole time we were doing it. <laughs> <laughs> and had a lot of fun. Give it up for one of my best friends, Mr. Dale Hilton, everybody. Hell yeah. Hey, thanks. Thank you. Thank you for uh, having me on. Thank you for uh, letting me do this. And, uh, uh richard man uh i hate to hear all the problems that you're going through um but uh those uh those problems are nothing like our road gigs that we had and and sorry everybody if i confused everybody when i came on i really didn't know the order or what kind of so i started goofing on uh richard and i Keep probably goofing. should have saved it till now but uh yeah um <laughs> do whatever you want really crappy food we ate hairy food <laughs> and um, that's what that was all about earlier and, oh uh, yeah i know you were in the hospital and uh i've had some uh, hospital issues uh some health issues myself too i just had my uh uh gallbladder taken out and a hernia surgery mm. all at the same time and uh when i got out of the out of the surgery out of the operating room the uh doctor she's she uh she said you gotta you got a two for one we had a two for one special going on today, and uh, <laughs> that wasn't funny. It was true, though. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, but yeah, I know. I don't know if you noticed this, uh, Richard. When you were in the hospital, was well, one thing I noticed that all of the nurses. I mean, what great people! They did more than just, you know, they did more than just nurses nursing work. They, I mean, they would bring us food and. You know, bring me my food, and 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 you know, uh, they were moving furniture at one point, and I'm like, do, do I need to tip you guys? I mean, what's going on here? <laughs> and uh, but one other thing is, all of those nurses were hot. I mean, every single nurse in the hospital was fucking hot. I mean, you know, fuck, even the male nurses hot, <laughs> and um, yeah. Yeah, but uh, you can't really pick up on chicks in the hospital. It's hard to get your play on, you know, when you've got tubes sticking out of your dick. <laughs> uh, you just, it makes, it's it's rough. It's a rough challenge, you know, and uh, it kind of reminded me when I was a kid, you know, coming up and hitting on girls for the first time, you know, trying to score. And uh, I'd always get that same reaction. Dale, you're just like a brother. You're just like a brother. I'm like, well, does your brother want to wear your ass as a CPAP machine? <laughs> <laughs> see, see, that's a lot funnier in a club when you got the microphone and you make a noise. And then, it's a lot funnier than it is in my bedroom. Um, anyway, uh, I, I'm pretty funny in my bedroom in other ways, but we won't talk about that. I, uh, I've got bad fantasies. My fantasies are so bad I jack off with Neil Sporin. Um, <laughs> I thought that one was going to hit better. All right, anyway. Yeah, I'm, hey, I liked it. At least you're not I'm, jacking I'm, off to Judge Judy anymore. We, we, that was good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh. I, uh, I used to do a joke about wanting to fuck Judge Judy, and I don't remember any of it now. Um, <laughs> oh, that was a good bit. About that. It was a good bit, and I don't remember it. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, uh, I have, uh, you know, I've uh, because I was in the hospital. I, you know, since then, you know, I got a lot of health, and I'm not, uh, but I, I've lost fifty six pounds. And oh, wow. um, damn, all um, right. Uh, no, 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 no. Don't do any of that, man, because uh, I'm still fat. <laughs> you, you, you can't tell. You can't. Oh, oh, he, he looks the same. Wait. 
Well, I'm really killing it, aren't I, Richard? All right. Anyway, <laughs> oh, you're um, doing great, man. It's uh, it's a uh, different. It's it's different when you're in your bedroom because of this COVID. The yeah. COVID well, thing no, is really. Uh, uh, I think a couple of them's got the mics muted off, so you can't hear the laughs. But I think you're doing oh, great. Okay. All right. Well, that's that's a good excuse. Um, <laughs> thank you. That's, uh... <laughs> well, the COVID you know, really kind of... Yeah. Yeah. Turn on your mics. Let him hear you laugh, y'all. <laughs> it's fucked up for a comedy show not to have the laughing. You know what I'm saying? It right. is. <laughs> you know, like, this is the part where everybody laughs, and uh, oh no, this is the part where I move on. And uh, now, nah, man, it's cool. I like doing this no matter what, because um, I think uh, Rich, like I was saying, Richard gets all these these really tough gigs. Uh, I think one time uh, Texaco got a new trash dumpster. <laughs> it needed a ribbon cutting and i did the mc for that one but uh <laughs> covid is really <laughs> they're laughing but they don't know they don't oh, know man. they don't know oh. um, i've told COVID... them some stories but i haven't told them all stories right right you get done with a richard corp gig man you could feel like you could fuck it bring me star search you know <laughs> star search, star search. Boy, that's an old one. um i don't even i don't even know what's going on anymore because of the covid the covid's really kind of put a put a a damper on comedy man you know and i mean you know a lot, a lot of clubs are closing and closed and you know, down to one show a night instead of two nights and hiring local people instead of road people, you know, and uh, none of that's happening anymore, you know, because of the COVID. And when I think the problem with COVID is uh, there's no zombies. And, uh, <laughs> you know, think what you will, but there's no zombies in it. I mean, that's all we needed was just to see one guy come back to life and start chewing on somebody else. And then, oh, long lines, <laughs> long lines at the, at the, you know, the, the shots to get your shots. And, um, and, uh, you know, if you got your mask on, it'd be hard to get bit. Yes. Yes. I'm really killing it right now. And, um, <laughs> But uh, I uh, just uh, a little bit about me. I, I and I'll I'll get out of here in a little bit. But a little bit about me is I um, I really am sick and tired of some of the music today. Uh, mumble rap. We've heard of mumble rap now. The new thing. It's just. It sounds like they're just too tired to rap. <laughs> if you've ever heard of mumble rap, it's like. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Mumble rap is this? Uh, uh, it's like they're all on Xanax trying to do nursery rhymes. <laughs> Any, you know, Jesus Christ. I mean, I, now I'm starting to feel. I don't feel so bad for being a death metal fan. Um, <laughs> At least you know a little death metal's. Uh, you know it's 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 more energetic. That's for sure. It's it's a lot more energetic than mumble rap. Me and my buddy Dave, <laughs> we went to go see a band called Napalm Death, and uh, it was a trip watching those guys. Man, they were you know they were like, "Hello, we're from Birmingham, England. We're glad <laughs> you're here tonight to indulge ourselves. This next track is entitled." <laughs> <laughs> oh, my buddy God, Dave shit his pants. It's like, uh, could you spell that for me, please? And, uh, yeah, that's death metal, you know. And uh, but but before I got into comedy, um, I'm I'm glad to be in comedy if if I could ever get a gig. Hint, hint, <laughs> hint. Um, if I could. <laughs> oops. I, I love doing comedy. Uh, before I got into doing comedy, I had two full-time jobs. Uh, I had, uh, in the daytime, I worked for a self-storage facility. And if I answered their phones a certain way, I would get a bonus. And at night, I had a job where I answered phones for an escort service. <laughs> and if I answered their phones a certain way, I, I'd get arrested. 
<laughs> so, sometimes I'd be a little so tired. I'd get my phone conversations all mixed up, you know, and th at nighttime I'd have guys calling me up and they'd be like, Hey, what do your girls look like? Huh? And I'd be like, well, we have several different ladies. There's blondes, brunettes, redheads, busty girls, petite girls. Some are short, some are tall. Some are five foot five, five by 10, 10 by 20. <laughs> you can park a bass boat in some of them. <laughs> you, you think that's bad little old ladies and call me up in the daytime and they'd be like, how much are your storage facilities? And I'd be like, $250 an hour. <laughs> Plus tips. And she's like, well, that's ridiculous. For that kind of money, I'll just sell my body. And I'm like, well, we're hiring. <laughs> oh, boom. All right. Finally, woke you people up. All right. That's good. That's good. That's the, not the mumble rap crowd. Uh, Richard, man, I love you, man. I hope you get better. Um, I hope they're, uh, the, the dickhead government that's fucking with you will leave you alone and let you be. And uh, you've really done a lot for my comedy career. You've uh, uh, you're rough gigs, but rough gigs are tough gigs. And uh, that's what uh, that's what the comics need. The young comics need a tough gig. These are like, oh, I'm going to do really good. I'm going to kill. I'm going to kill. I'm going to kill. No, you got to eat a bowl of shit sometimes to <laughs> yeah. find out if you're a real good comic or not. And you, sir, serve up some big bowls of shit. And I'd like to thank you for that. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> I love you, man. Thank you for having me on. Thank you, everybody, for having me on. Uh, and uh, I, I can't wait to be on again. Thank you. Oh, we thank you, Dale, you. man. Thank that. you, man. Much love. Much love. I love, I love you, buddy. your mom. Please tell your mom I said hi. Give her my love. And, uh, oh, shit. You killed, man. You Oh. Everybody Come back on Tuesday night, man. You, you you just had a great set. You just didn't hear, no, hear nobody laugh because these guys have all got their mics on. And but I understand what you mean about COVID, and I'm really getting upset because I was told we got another variant coming through when I was in the hospital the other day, and I was told to watch out. And the lady goes, uh, "Do you like masks?" And I go, well, I, "Yeah, I, I never really care for masks very much. Very I much. don't like them." Uh, but I, what I figured out is you got to find a mask that you really like, and if you find a mask you really like, uh, you'll wear the damn thing. And I think I finally found mine. Here, let me show you. <laughs> <laughs> oh no yeah i think i finally found my mask here you know it's <laughs> it's nice it's warm you know it's i get a lot of great years. looks when i go into the grocery store <laughs> yeah uh yeah I, I think i ought to wash it though i found this one on the on the ground at arby's Oh shit! Oh. <laughs> oh. 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 I, I I smell fish. <laughs> but anyway, like I said, please find a mask you like. This is my public service announcement. You know, I, I really want to help you people out there. Just find a mask you like, man. Be like me. <laughs> we all. Anyway, be uh. <laughs> I told you I'll do anything for a fucking laugh. You know? <laughs> um, you don't know whose fucking panties those were, man. I tell you, uh, those were penicillin pennies. <laughs> you really just picked those up off the ground? <laughs> well, Richard, you never know. You really have to ask. Huh? Right, you do. Well, you know me, man. I I do a lot of really weird shit, man. I do, and uh, I've uh, I, I I've I like I've been playing around. Right? I've been playing around with something new, you guys. And I was gonna wait until Tuesday night to show it, but you guys have been so great. We've been having such a fun time. You guys mind if I do a little experiment today? No, uh, sir. Okay, here here I I got it. A deck of cards, watch if I just sort of wow.
Ain't that cool? You want to see something neater? Watch this. <laughs> wow. Well, we always knew that you were playing with a marked deck. <laughs> <laughs> Watch, watch the pin. Oh, shit. <laughs> well, the weed's kicking in. <laughs> <laughs> wow. How does he do that? Come on here. That's a brand new trick. You're the first people to ever, ever uh, see me do it. That was awesome. <laughs> All right. Watch the pendant. Watch the penis. Is that what you said? That's what my boyfriend says on Sundays, too. <laughs> a voice from nowhere. I love it. Okay. <laughs> no, you, did, you, you, did, did, you didn't get to see the penis joke, hon? No, I didn't. Oh, well, here, let, let me see. I was, I was saying, you know, rubber bands, I do a thing with aversion therapy. And uh, when you hurt yourself every time you think of something that you're not supposed to be playing with. And uh, actually, it, your thoughts go so far into it that the rubber band actually takes the shape of whatever you're thinking of. And... Uh, <laughs> that was the dick trick I did tonight, Miss Mello. <laughs> uh, I always do tricks with my dick. It makes me sound like a male prostitute. <laughs> but you know me, I have a lot of high thoughts, man. I do, you know, like, what was the guy who discovered milk thinking? And I bet he did a lot of other strange shit, too. <laughs> if you're cleaning your vacuum cleaner, you are your vacuum cleaner. <laughs> if your dog breaks a mirror, does he get 49 years of bad luck? <laughs> <laughs> you ever wonder where Jesus found friends with the names like Peter, John, Paul, and Matthew in the Middle East? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Can fat people go skinny dipping? <laughs> If a cannibal bites his tongue and likes it, will he eat the whole thing? <laughs> <laughs> if you believe in reincarnation on your tombstone, do you put R.I.P., rest in peace, or B.R.B., be right back? <laughs> Definitely B.R.B. <laughs> If a midget gives you a hand job, does it make your dick look bigger? Yes. <laughs> yeah. <man. laughs> we got an enthusiastic yes on that one, huh? It better. Yes. <laughs> if it doesn't, you got fucking problems. <laughs> oh man. Oh, I tell you, it's, I, you guys have put a joy in this old man's heart. You really have. I, I really appreciate all this that you're doing today. It's. It's really cool because I've been really lonely lately. I was so lonely the other night I played a game of strip solitaire and lost. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
Yeah, I, I, I know. It's, 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 it's bad. I've, I'm really been heartbroken lately, you know, because uh, I'm looking for a woman and I'm an old fashioned guy. So the first thing I look for in a woman is a good heart. I'm just glad God put your boobs in front of it. <laughs> 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 Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right. <laughs> no, I'm trying to get a woman. <laughs> uh, I tell you, I, I, I tell you, I'd get religion if I could find a woman. They say if you find a woman, it's I, I fuck. I don't know that joke. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, let's talk about my sex life. It's fucking funny. So I, I got something to cry about. No. Um <laughs> Oh Lord. Um son, are you uh ready to uh record uh, me? Uh how much more time do we got, ladies? Ten minutes. We got about ten minutes left. Feel free. Oh, oh we got about ten minutes left? Okay. Uh Oh, let and me Richard see what I can do here in 10 minutes. I have a question for Dale. Yes. Dale, Dale this is Anna. Know? Anna, this is Dale. <laughs> Hi, Anna. You did very well tonight. Thank you. You did too. But I have a question for you. Did you go to a hospital or to Hooters? Because you said that they're all hot. And, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, got <laughs> I didn't know you was at the hospital. <laughs> I had I just mean, come from Hooters. Ah, uh, yeah, no, that makes sense. I mean, you, you thought you were tipping, and it was, you probably had to overpay in both anyway, so. <laughs> How did you know? You're so correct. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I heard they do weird things in Hooters, so wouldn't surprise me if they did uh, surgery, too. <laughs> no, a wings a hysterectomy in the same day. <laughs> everybody has their kinks. <laughs> right. Mine just so happens to be chicken wings and gallbladder removal. <laughs> By hot chicks. <laughs> By hot chicks, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I know what you mean about the hot chicks in the hospital, man. They sent two women in my room one night to shave me for my operation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, 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 I thought they were just going to, you know, shave. The, man, they started down by my balls. And I got <laughs> two women lathering up my balls and shaving them. And I'm going, oh, fuck. So I'm trying to think of anything but what they're fucking doing to my nether region. <laughs> so I'm singing every theme song I can think of. Here on Gilligan's Island, there's a story <laughs> of a man named... And the nurses are looking at me going, Mr. Corp, what's...